ISIL has established a self-proclaimed caliphate, at present stretching over a vast territory roughly from Aleppo to near Baghdad, from which it intends to launch a terrorist jihad not merely against the region, but on a global basis. Indeed, it has specifically targeted Canada and Canadians, urging supporters to attack, quote, disbelieving Canadians in any manner, vowing that we should not feel secure even in our homes. For all of us who are blessed to live in a country like this, it is hard to appreciate, understand, fathom how we can have people who so despise and are involved in a movement who so want violence, who so despise modernity, who so hate progress, that they can desire to drive out medical workers from their community, harm them, how they can enslave women, torture children, how they can kill, want to kill anyone who looks or thinks different than them. It is, in a sense, Mr. Speaker, beyond our comprehension, but it is very real. And in this struggle in which we are engaged, in which not only our finest values must be pushed to work, so must be and will be the highest unity and resolve. They are our ultimate and indispensable weapons, and that's what these people will face. This will lead us to strengthen our resolve and redouble our efforts and those of our national security agencies to take all necessary steps to identify and counter threats and keep Canada safe here at home. Just as it will lead us to strengthen our resolve and redouble our efforts to work with our allies around the world and fight against the terrorist organizations who brutalize those in other countries with the hope of bringing their savagery to our shores they will have no safe haven. When a trio of hooded men struck at some of our most cherished democratic principles, freedom of expression, freedom of the press, they assaulted democracy everywhere. Hundreds of thousands of people around the world in city and in cities across this country openly demonstrated that we will not be intimidated 